All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. It looks like we have everyone out of the waiting room, uh, but just to orient us, it is November 9th, 2023. This is the afternoon of our third day of hearing uh, on the pending petition for change by the city of Solving of water rate permit 15878. And uh, where we broke before lunch, we had heard from um, Mr. Sin, his uh, summary of his written testimony and we, I believe, are ready um, for cross-examination of Mr. Sin. But before we get started with that, is there anything that I'm missing about our status? All right, with that, uh, I will look to you, Ms. O'Sullivan, are you going to be handling the cross-examination for the city? You are on mute. Thank you. Yes, I am. Great. And Mr. Sin, are you ready to uh, get started? Yes, Ms. Kenzie, I am. Great, thank you. Then I hand things over to you, Ms. O'Sullivan. Thank you, Ms. Kenzie. And uh, I can now say good afternoon, Mr. Sin. Good afternoon, Ms. O'Sullivan. Thank you. And uh, thank you for um, answering some questions from me today. So in your written testimony, you referred to a photo of an area between well site A and B. Do you recall that? Yes, I am, I do. Okay, and you say that CDFW staff took those photos, not you, correct? Correct. Okay, and I just want to confirm that CDFW staff, uh, who are not identified, only visited that area between well site A and well site B once, correct? I do not know. Can I mention uh, the person that did that? If that's okay, and maybe that person can speak more to that, or well, if not, I, and I do not know if that the staff there have visited there more than once. I think that's so sufficient for my purposes. Um, your testimony says only refers to the date of May 18th, correct? The, that's what was the date of the photos, yes. Okay, thank you. And your testimony does not explain when that's those CDFW staff members or member arrived at that site or left from the site? Uh, as far as the time of day, I do not know, but those were daytime photos. So sometime during the day, I, I do not know when they arrived or left during that day. Okay, thank you. And your testimony doesn't include any description or and, and there's no exhibit with any notes of what CDFW staff did during that visit on May 18th, correct? Correct. Okay. And your direct testimony also does not say or describe that CDFW staff or yourself visited or surveyed any habitat areas downstream of the project site during your preparation for this hearing, correct? No, I did not survey the site myself, uh, but when you say survey the site, what do you mean? I, I'm specifically referring to area habitat areas downstream of the project site, that those were not visited or surveyed. I, I cannot speak of other staff, but I can speak only to myself. I would have to confer with other staff to, to give you a, a full answer to that. Okay, with respect to yourself, did no. you? No, okay, thank you. You're welcome. And your testimony does not indicate or say that uh, you or any other CDFW staff did protocol level surveys at the project site, correct? Correct. Uh, again, uh, can you enter protocol level surveys for what species? Any species. You did not, your testimony does not discuss doing protocol level surveys for any species. That's correct, for, for the wildlife species, correct. As far as fish species, I do not know. I'd have to confer with my colleagues. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned critical habitat for the, is it SWIFL? Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> yeah, the acronym, the four-letter acronym for bird species. Uh, the time they do, they do the four acronym, the Southwestern Willow Flycatcher. Yes, yes the, the flycatcher. Um, but there's no designated critical habitat actually in well site B, correct? No, not at well site B. It occurs approximately 2,000 feet downstream. downstream. Okay, thank you. You're um, Ms. Mullen, if we could pull up CDFW 64, please. And I realized I was remiss in giving you my list of exhibits to get ready this time, uh, but there's not not as many here, so...
Thank you, Ms. Mullen. And I know things are a little small, Mr. Sin, but I believe you're familiar with this map. Uh, yes. You referred to it in your testimony and your, in your uh, summary. So this is a figure that you derive from the 2011 Kachuma Reservoir final EIR that CDFW annotated. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And again, it's quite small, but it shows areas that are labeled as suitable habitat that start near well, what's what you've all labeled as well site B, correct? Correct. And there's areas that are labeled that are green, correct, on yes. the map? And those are labeled occupied areas? Yes, and uh, after the zoom in, I think in 19, between, sorry, 89 and 99 is what the legend says. Yeah. Yes, and the green occupied areas are near Buell, start near Buellton, correct? Yes, and east of the 101, east a little bit of that, right dot that's west of site B, there's a little bit green to the right of that as well. Uh, okay, I see um, the green starting at Buellton. No, if you zoom in, you can see that it occurs also to the little bit to the right of that right red dot. Let's, Ms. Mullen, if we can, please zoom in. And you're speaking to the red dot that's closest to site B there, just yes. to the, okay. And you're saying it starts just to the left of that dot. The no, green. to the right. If you, you zoom in and the quality of this map might not be as good as the, the actual attachment A, I believe, for the Kuchuma water rights EIR, but it's a little right. bit to the Okay, I think we might have to agree to disagree that there's green um, starting anywhere closer to Buellton, but, um, this exhibit does not label anything as high quality habitat. Is that correct? It says suitable habitat, which would be suitable for the species, which will obviously meet the minimal requirements for breeding and foraging. So, okay. But nothing's labeled high quality habitat, correct? In, in this case, correct. Okay. Uh, Ms. Mullen, if we could please go to CDFW 53. And um, Mr. Sin, I, I think this won't be a surprise, but this is your testimony. So, uh, and if, and when we get there, Miss um, Mullen, I'm looking for page 10. Okay. And if we could have basically the bottom of page 10 um, and the top of page 11 visible, that would be great. And Mr. Sin, as we're getting there, you recognize this text that's in italics as a quote from the 2011 Kachuma Reservoir final EIR, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, and if we could just scroll down a little bit more, Ms. Mullen, so we can see that just the top of page 11 there, lines two through four. Okay, so that last sentence there, I just want to read it to you, Mr. Sin. It says, there is little likelihood of breeding willow flycatchers at Lake Kachuma or between Lake Kachuma and Buellton, as the habitat does not appear to be capable of supporting them. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Okay, and solving's in between Lake Kachuma and Buellton, correct? Correct. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Mullen, if we could please go to uh, solving 22, please. All right, and as you see there, Mr. Sin, I'm directing you to what's Appendix C of the city's addendum, the Pax Terrestrial Biological Resources Report. Do you see that there? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Um, 
And Ms. Mullen, if we could go to PDF page eight and have the last paragraph of that page showing. And if we don't mind making it a little bit bigger, thank you. Excellent. And Mr. Sin, I'll represent to you, and you can probably see as I'm talking that this par this last paragraph is uh, discussing the flycatcher and the least bells vireo species. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Okay, and I want to read to you the the third sentence. I'll give you a second to to get there. Starts with the word transient, kind of on the the uh, right side of the screen there. Oh yes. Yes. And so that sentence says, transient and foraging individuals may utilize the project area. However, given the minimal amount of potential habitat that may exist, it is unlikely. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. So based on that, you're aware that the, the city's environmental documentation does acknowledge that transient uh, individuals of these two species may utilize the project site, correct? Uh, yes, that's what is stated in the report. Okay, thank you. Now, looking at the same paragraph, I want to read a, a few more sentences. The first sentence there, starting with the, the names of the species, um, uh, says that those species are not expected to nest on site because the existing riparian vegetation located in the small band along the river and a small remnant in the proposed well site B are not extensive enough to support breeding habitat for these species. Do you see that? I do. And that more in the next sentence begins, uh, more extensive riparian habitat, which is more suitable for these species, does occur approximately 1.3 miles downstream of well site B. You see that as well? Yes, I do. Okay, so based on that, you're aware that the city's environmental documentation considered the downstream areas better suited to breeding for these two species. Can you repeat that? You're based on what we just read through. You're aware that the city's environmental documentation considered that the downstream areas are better suited to breeding for these two bird species. Right. Yes, I, I do see Thank that you. in the report. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Mullen, um, that's all I need from that exhibit. Uh, if you don't mind pulling up CDFW 53 again, and this time we're going to page 13, please. I'm sure looking at that, am I allowed to respond to any of the questions or do you want me to? Uh, just... So far you've been answering all that I need, Mr. Sin, thank you. And Mr. Sin, just so you know, there is a, an opportunity for redirect from your attorney. So that would be the chance for them to ask you questions about related to these questions. Oh, so we will get to that. Thank you for that clarification. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Sin. Um, and let's see, looking at page 13, and if we could have paragraph 37, lines 17 through 19 visible, please, Ms. Mullen. Okay, and I just want to say this is, um, in, uh, you recognize this as a quote in your testimony from the final recovery plan of the Lease Bells Vireo? Yes, a draft 98 recovery plan, yes. Okay, and I, I just want to... Uh, point you to what starts at line 17, that critical habitat for the least bells vireo exists along the San Inez River from below Jameson Dam west to a point approximately 1.6 kilometers, one mile, east of the Gibraltar Dam. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Okay. This area is well upstream of the city's project, correct? That's correct. That's federally designated critical habitat for that species. Yes. And yes. it's upstream of the Kachuma Dam even, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Mullen. We can pull that down. Okay. And um, just a few more questions here, Mr. Sin. You also cite to surveys that were uh, surveys for the the least bells vireo that were conducted in 2020 and 2022, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah, they did it 20, 2020, 2021, 2022, and I believe they conducted uh, surveys this year as, as well. Okay, but your testimony only refers from 2020 through 2022, correct? Correct, the, the three years, yes. Yes. Um, those surveys did not detect any lease bells at the project site, correct? No, they detected yellow-breasted chat, which is an indicator species for lease bells here, like I said in my verbal testimony. Uh, but just to clarify, those chat that you showed on the, the map were not in well site B, correct? 
Not on the actual well site, but right in the riparian area, right below the well site. Right. And and do you agree that lease bells Vireo were not identified in that area, correct? That's correct. Okay. They were the closest sighting of those species were was over two miles away, correct? Approximately correct. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. O'Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Sin. Um, with that, I'll turn to Mr. Bivens. Does CCRB have questions for Mr. Sin? No questions from CCRB. Thank you, Mr. Sin. Thank you. And the parent district? No questions from the parent district. ID number one? No questions from ID one. Thank you. Alice all Guest Ranch? No, thank you. And then um, do any of the other fisheries entities have questions in the form of, within the scope of um, Ms. O'Sullivan's cross-exam? For cow trout, I do not. Thank you. Ms. Beal, do you have anything? Um, I don't, thank you. Thank you. I don't have any additional questions. So with that, I will turn um, to Ms. Germanario, do you have redirect questions for Mr. Sin? Yes, I do. Are you prepared to um, go ahead with redirect at this time? Sure, yes. You may proceed. Okay, um, thank you. Okay, um, good afternoon, Mr. Sin. Um, uh, let's see, I will start. Um, so Council for Solving asked you some questions about um, uh, your testimony about um, photographs taken between well sites um, A and B, is that correct? Correct. I can't hear Mr. Sin. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Did you, can you uh, repeat the answer? Correct. I, I'm sorry. Can anyone else hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. I hear you now. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to ask you if you wanted to um, provide any clarification about um, the photographs at this time. Not so much. I believe at Parathena and Testimony, it was CBFW staff uh, that went down there to take photos. I did not have further context as far as uh, if it was a reconnaissance mission or an official survey, though I can you know, surely get those answers. Uh, if needed, so I know they were taken that at that time at the location. So all of that is true. Um, I believe there were questions from um, Council for Solving regarding um, who took uh, the photographs. Do you have knowledge of that? Yes, I do. And uh, would you be able to tell us who that was? Yes, uh, since you asked me a direct question. Uh, Kyle Evans, who is now, I see his camera on. Okay. And it's correct that these photos were taken on um, May 18th, 2023, to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And so there were also some questions from Council for Solving about whether CDFW did a protocol level um, survey at the proposed project site, is that correct? Okay, and uh, were there, um, do you want to explain, um, were there other surveys um, taken of the project site um, that you looked at in the course of preparing your testimony? As far as myself, uh, I did not go uh, to to that site as I told Ms. Sullivan. Okay, but so looking- um, staff, I would have to uh, confer with my colleagues. Okay, uh, but looking beyond yourself, um, survey results, uh, did you um, refer to the results of surveys that others had conducted at that location um, for that uh, species, I believe, uh, Luis Bell's Vareo, Vareo, sorry. Oh, yes, that was in regards to a traditional Section 6 grant with the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. Yep, with the short. Oh. 
Oh, Mr. Sin, it looks like you went on mute or I don't know if you hit mute or sometimes Zoom seems to do that. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, That's okay. As far as yeah, those other surveys, that was with uh, those NIFA surveys I had mentioned with uh, the Griffith Wildlife um, Consulting Company. Okay, and if you would, do you want to just provide some brief comments on what those uh, surveys showed in relation to um, the species? Uh, uh, I'm going to gonna object. My question on Cross was much more narrow than that. I was just okay. asking if he had performed surveys in himself or if CDFW had performed surveys in preparation for the, his testimony, not asking him to explain the te the surveys that were that are already discussed in his in his direct. I think that's that's fair. So if you can limit the scope, Ms. German Aria. Sure, thank you. Um, so moving on, uh, Council for Solving also, I believe, showed you a um, figure from the Kachuma EIR um, CWW 64. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Okay, and you know, if I remember correctly, the line of questioning was um, asking you whether. Uh, the figure was labeled as indicating high quality habitat, correct? Correct. Um, do you want to, uh, or is there any other um, information you want to mention that you considered uh, in determining whether um, this area has high quality habitat for the species? To repeat that I mean, question. I'm going to object that my question was quite narrow and just referring to what that specific exhibit said, not his general assessment of the habitat near the project. Well, the question kind of it opens the door for him to respond. Um, you know, if you're saying the figure doesn't say it's high quality habitat, he has other information perhaps that informs that. I'll, I'll, I'll allow Mr. Sin to respond to this question. Go ahead, Mr. Sin. Yes, you know, the the, the Kachuma EIR figure that was shown does, as I explained, Ms. O'Sullivan, as she had mentioned, shows that suitable habitat and area occupied so for that 10 year period. Uh, given the downward trend of Southwestern Willow flycatcher, it's important to, even though it's a fragment in small habitats, to keep as much habitat as possible for continuous contingent habitat for the species, especially given the decline. So at well site B, it, it appears, even the tax report had mentioned the habitat quality types, which are characteristics of high quality burial sofa habitat, which is also my written testimony, that having as much available suitable habitat for these species is critical given the downward trend, especially in closer proximity to what we have seen as occurrences of these endangered species. Thank you. Um, and is it correct, uh, just one more question on that point, um, that your testimony discusses um, uh, survey, um, sorry, documentation of riparian habitat directly south of proposed well site B to be high quality for least Bell's Vareo um, submitted as part of the ESA section six um, survey project. Correct. That's also an exhibit uh, as far as a full report from the NIFWIF Section 6 grant. Thank you. And moving on uh, to um, Council for Solving, had questions for you about um, Solving 22, um, if I recall, uh, that is that the um, addendum? Do you recall those questions? Is that in regards to the tax report? I believe these questions were about um, habitat for um, least bells Vareo. Do you recall those uh, questions? Uh, yeah, I have to look at that exhibit again. Is that the uh, one regards to the... Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Could we actually bring up that um, exhibit? What, it's uh, what, solving 22. Great. Solving 22, please, Ms. Mullen. Oh, okay. yes, uh, this is the PACS report. Thank you. Um, if you would please go to page eight, if you're not already there. OK. 
Okay. Uh, actually, if you could go a little lower down on the page, I think you were actually on it before. Uh, if you could stop there, thank you. Um, so you uh, you did review um, this uh, addendum and this particular passage in preparing your testimony, correct? Yes, I read the, the whole fax report. And you also reviewed um, Solvang's uh, EIR for this uh, project, is that correct? For, for the original um, Wells project, correct? Correct. This is associated with the 2022 addendum. Okay. <laughs> and is there anything um, you'd like to add? Well, let me backtrack, um, strike that. I believe there were questions um, regarding uh, this uh, portion of the addendum and um, its characterization of a habitat for least Bells Brayo, is that right? Or I'm sorry, the um, Southwestern Willow Flycatcher, is that right? Southwest, excuse me, Southwestern Willow Flycatcher and least Bells Brayo are, are mentioned. Okay. Um, is there anything you'd like to, um, well, I believe, uh, Sorry, hold on a sec. No, you're good. Um, did you, uh, hmm. looking back at this material and, you know, refreshing your memory about the analysis you did, um, would you wanna add anything to your answer before regarding, um, Solvang's assessment of um, habitat for southwestern willow flycatcher in this vicinity. Yes, and least Bliss Vario, you know, uh, as I said in my written and my verbal testimony, that we find that there's quality habitat for both species right at, right below well site B in the riparian area. And the PACS report in their vegetation description talks about the, the thickets and a thick understory there too, I believe. I don't have it right in front of me, but I remember that. So they characterized that as well. And and they had mentioned in the same report, and I think it's further, I, I don't have it in front of me this one point, and I think this was discussed yesterday as well, or sorry, a couple of days ago, um, where the 1.3 miles downstream from Alisal Bridge, yeah, it's right there, identifies uh, suitable swiftwell habitat 1.3 miles downstream of Alisal Bridge, which we agreed with Joe Gibson testimony that brings it right in the middle of well site B. So they have two in, two sentences in this paragraph. On the one, two, three, four, fifth line down, they say more extent for our print habitat is more suitable 1.3 miles downstream from well site B, and then it says certify ER identify suitable southwestern like catcher point approximately 1.3 miles downstream from Alice Hall Bridge. I know from reading this port, they surveyed only 1.5 miles downstream of well site, or sorry, Alice Hall Bridge, which only will bring it a tenth, two tenths of a mile past Alice Hall Bridge. So they did not survey, according to this report, to 1.3 miles downstream of well site B. So given the information that's in the report, I don't know how they can make that determination if they never even visited a site according to this report. Okay, and is it um, your opinion that the other environmental review document um, for the original Wells project, uh, the um, EIR uh, indicates um, there is actually um, quality habitat um, at a distance from uh, all cell bridge, which would include the proposed well site. Yes, uh, as stated there, where it says certified ER identified. So in that document, then by 1.3 miles on string on cell bridge, which is consistent with the Kachuma EIR uh, figures. So yes, it, it did state that. And they also, if I remember, conducted only a one-day report, a one-day survey. Okay, and then looking to the sentence, um, transient and foraging individuals may utilize the project area 
However, given the minimal amount of potential habitat that may exist, this is unlikely. Um, is there anything from your own review um, that you would uh, want to um, respond uh, to that? Oh, yeah. Again, uh, you know, there are other factors involved as far as like brown hat calibers, as I mentioned, it's a threat for leaks close vireo. Though with those surveys aforementioned, they did, again, document yellow-breasted chat messing there. So that is a good indicator because they like the same habitat. They're gleaners as well, as, as vireos are. Gleaners are uh, birds that will take invertebrates off the vegetation, whether it's off the bark or a leaf, though the vireo do, do capture invertebrates in the air as well. So behaviorally, they're very similar, and they like the very similar habitat types for their foraging behavior and both nesting. So for us, we thought that was, a again, they're an indicator species that could have good potential for them to nest there, the, albeit the other threats. Okay. Um, so is it your opinion that um, the characterization of habitat in the um, addendum and the EIR are inconsistent? With each other, yes. Yeah. This is, that question goes beyond the scope of my cross-examination. I think that's, that's, uh, I'll sustain the objection and I, I think I understand where you're going, Ms. Germanario, so. Okay, uh, moving on, let's see, leave, uh, maybe just one more thing. Um, Mr. Sin, do you remember questions regarding um, surveys uh, for least Belgevreo in 2021 and 2022? Yes, that's our range, so 2020, 2021, 20, 2022, 20, yes. Okay. Um, is there anything you would want to add um, to kind of supplement the information regarding those surveys in terms of additional information um, or other surveys conducted? Uh, Ms. Yeah. Kinsey, I just, the if Ms. Um, Germanario could be more specific in her redirect, uh, because I asked that those about those surveys generally does not open up for a a general discussion on the issue. My questions were quite narrow on cross. I think that's fair. Ms. Germanario, are you, other than asking whether there's anything he wants to add, is there anything specific um, with respect to the questions that you have with respect to the surveys? I would like to keep this focused. Um, no, actually not at this time. Let me see, I think. I think that, um, oh, I do have one more question. So, well, following up on, um, yeah, uh, surveys, uh, to your knowledge, um, have protocol level surveys uh, for the species been conducted at the proposed project site? At the project site, was protocol level surveys done in regards to, in, in general, Again, you know, the NIFO surveys were um, done from basically from the Kachuma Reservoir right to the ocean. And so they did not conduct swiffle level protocol level surveys as far as going repeatedly multiple times in the area. So they did standard protocol level surveys for when they did the reconnaissance for at least those vireo. But we have strong confidence in the consultant again before. objection my cross question was simply whether mr sin had performed those protocol level surveys in preparation for his testimony i think that's right so i'm going to sustain that objection as well okay mr. mario do you have any more questions uh nothing further thank you all right thank you um i did remember that i had a question which we'll we'll see if it, mr sin i'm wondering if um within your area of expertise as a biologist, whether you have experience and knowledge uh, and expertise with respect to the water needs of the riparian vegetation. So not 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 yeah. the animals, but the plants. Yes, uh, yeah, I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions, Ms. Kenzie, on that. So what I'm wondering is, in your opinion, um, 
you had expressed, I think you cited to a document in support, but also expressed the opinion that um, the riparian vegetation on which I think it was Lee Spelsbury depends or uses habitat uh, thrives in conditions in which there's less than when groundwater levels are within three meters of the surface. Did I paraphrase yes, that? Yes, the Southwest and Willow Fly Culture Recovery Plan. Thank you. Okay. Do you know whether um, in the statement of less than three meters groundwater levels are, or subsurface water levels are less than three meters from the surface, um, do you know how that accounts for what I think is normal seasonal variation in water levels? I think on most, as far as I know, on most river systems. Um, is it your understanding that sometimes levels would drop below three meters and sometimes be above? Or what is your understanding of how that would work? Um, oh, yeah, to so, support this thriving riparian habit plants that we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so we're talking the ideal situation and the recovery plan also talks about, you know, what I stated before, the threats and stressors that would draw down that water uh, for, you know, for the various human consumptions and activities that would divert that water. And so as regards to the riparian vegetation community that that stated as far as the thick understory, you know, you got various plant communities in our riparian ecosystem, where there's herbaceous communities, shrub communities, and those larger trees. So that three meters is addressing your most maximal root depth species, which are, you know, your cottonwoods and willow trees, you know, which get up to that level. So we've been documented, they might get, you know, eight, nine feet or seven feet as a max root depth. And given that, you know, it needs to be less than that to cover the root depth to water for your shrubs and herbaceous species, which are important for these species as well for both nesting and foraging. Because let's say if it's at, and it maintains at a level only to sustain the tall stature trees, you're going to slowly see a die off of your herbaceous communities, then your shrubs, and get a kind of a quote unquote desert, desertification of that landscape. And as a result, what we found that a lot of times when those communities are gone, it fills in with like invasive plants, bunch grasses, which would be more susceptible to fire as fine fuel loads, which has a synergistic effect with drought. And so if a fire comes through, that buffer of wetness that is in the riparian zone, buffered by, if you will, a green uh, fire break, as fire term, term terminology, that will be gone. So uh, having that buffer to make sure that all plant communities thrive. I think, uh, let me let me have you pause, please, Mr. Oh, yeah. Sen, if Perfect. I can interrupt you. I th my question, what I was trying to focus on here was how resistant um, these typical shrubs and trees are to periods in which the groundwater levels or the subsurface water levels are lower than the root zone. Um, I mean, I would imagine they can maybe go, it, it, there's a difference between going a day and going a year. And I was wondering if you could comment on um, the, the, if you know, if you have knowledge of um, yeah, so these periods. Yeah, we see dieback of the larger trees after several years of extreme drought, for example, when that happens. Though, again, you know, those other plant communities that have shorter roots will go first. And as far as length of time, I believe even the final EIR and addendum recognizes that after several years without water, that plants will start to die. So I am in agreement with that. Would you expect, in, if there were six months in which the, the subsurface water table was lowered, would you expect to see die off of the shrubs and trees? Um, can you make an, or can you say anything project. knowledgeable? I, you know, I mean, maybe that you can't make an assessment. It depends. That's a fine answer. Yeah, I hate to say that. That's a standard biological <laughs> response. You know, you have to give it in context and in the context to a what time of year. Uh, a lot of your herbaceous uh, perennials Mugwort, for example, that is a predominant brew in San Santa's River. You know, they have a flowering period, I think, uh, March through August. And so having that diversity of those plants is important because those herbaceous communities will bring in pollinators that the like bees, for example, that flycatchers will eat. And the state of California were making a big push for pollinators as well as important ecosystem level processes. Um species uh, that are key for that as they pollinate other plants as well. So it depends, uh, you know, 
if six months will be done, what time of year it is, what plants will be affected, if it's done in a period will affect and kill off those flowering plants, that's just not going to be not a good scenario, as will reduce the foraging potential for some of these species. Thank and, you. That's very helpful, Mr. Sen. You're welcome. With that, I will turn to you, Ms. O'Sullivan, based on um, the redirect and my questions. Do you have additional questions for um, Mr. Sen? Thank you, Ms. Kinsey. I think I just have one or two. Um, Mr. Sen, you made a comment that you weren't sure how the PACS team you know, made determinations about habitat 1.3 miles downstream of well site B or even of well site B uh, without visiting the site. Do you remember making that comment? Yes. Okay. Um, and we established earlier that you did not visit the site, the project site or downstream areas, correct? And yet you made conclusions about habitat and species without visiting the site, correct? Correct. Can I address that further? Uh, nope, that's all I need. Thank you. No further questions, Ms. Kinsey. Thank you, Ms. O'Sullivan. I believe I checked all my boxes. So with that, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Sin, for joining us today. I really appreciate your testimony and appreciate you being here and spending time here. Um, thank you very much, and you are excused for the day. I think with that, we have, just to summarize where we are, my understanding of where we are, um, we have heard the case in chief um, from Cal Trout. We have heard the case in chief summary of written testimony from NIMFS. We still have outstanding from CD CDFW, uh, Mr. Demuha, which we are going to meet next week and talk about the timing of his testimony. Um, we have not yet uh, offered or accepted any of the exhibits into the record. We're going to deal with that um, later when we meet again, probably in, probably near the end in, des in December. What I did want to talk about today is our schedule going forward. We're going to meet next week, but on the limited question of when to hear from Mr. Demuha, I did want to talk about the possibility of bringing in Solving's rebuttal witnesses um, on November 29th, which we had kept reserved. And it's my understanding that Although the parent district may not be able to attend, that they had no objection to us hearing from Solvang's witnesses on the 29th. Um, that may put us in, if we haven't heard from Dr. De, uh, Mr. Demuha, it may put us in the position of hearing rebuttal testimony before we heard we hear the, the testimony to, that is being rebutted. Um, and we all have the written testimony, but hear the summary and the cross-examination. So there is that, it's slightly awkward, but I, I think it can be overcome, but I wanted to hear from all of you. So I look to you, uh, Mr. Kim, do you have any comments or thoughts about um, bringing in Solving's rebuttal witnesses on November 29th? I'll have to defer to uh, Ms. O'Sullivan because she's okay. been handling the, the scheduling, but just a, a couple comments um, based upon uh, what you just laid out and, and thank you for um, accurately laying out uh, you know, where we've been and where we're gonna go. And so uh, it's our understanding by close of business today, we are gonna get uh, some uh, red line of uh, Mr. Du uh, Demuha's uh, testimony. And uh, next Wednesday uh, is limited to a discussion of uh, not only when Mr. Demuha will uh, give his testimony, but also logistics and timing of, uh, you know, sir rebuttal, uh, you know, to that um, uh, revised testimony. So. Um, and then uh, just uh, housekeeping, two housekeeping matters um, while we're at it, um, if you don't mind, officer. Yes, please. So, so number one, um, you know, prior to uh, the start of uh, uh, this week, uh, we had the contingency of uh, a, a government, you know, U.S. government shutdown. And unfortunately, we have, as I understand it, you know, another deadline coming up uh, November 17th. And so I just wanted to you know, just plant the seed that um, if there is not a bill to extend that deadline, that uh, we should all be um, prepared to discuss you know, the ramifications of a shutdown if it happens on November 17th and how it impacts the schedule. So I, ju I just wanted to you know, flag that, put that in everyone's consciousness, because I, I think it would be productive to talk about that on the 15th. 
And then the uh, second housekeeping matter is, um, I believe you said that uh, uh, there would be transcripts uh, available, uh, you know, uh, some Zoom function, as I understand it, that uh, yes. you know, does a written transcription. And so just want to get a, a, a sense as to uh, uh, when that would be available, as well as how we would access them. So I'm going to turn to Mr. Anderson. I believe those are available almost immediately with our recordings and are uploaded onto the AHO FTP site, um, maybe now, but maybe um, Mr. Anderson, can you speak to the status of the Zoom transcripts for our, um, the hearing this week? Yes, the Zoom transcripts from the 6th and the 8th have been uploaded. The transcript from today should be complete sometime later this afternoon. And I can um, make sure that I move that over uh, later this afternoon. That would be great, Mr. Anderson. Then it'll be available. I, some of us do not have a work day tomorrow, but some of us may have a work day tomorrow, unfortunately. Great. Th thank you, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, I, I had not uh, accessed them and uh, had not uh, an idea as to how immediately available they were. So that that, that is fantastic. And so I think uh, Ms. O'Sullivan was ready to address uh, availability of uh, city rebuttal witnesses on November 29th and 30th. Thank, thank you, you. Kim. Go ahead. Yes, thank you, Ms. Kinsey. Uh, certainly the city has, you know, advised its rebuttal witnesses, Mr. Nicely and Mr. Vanderlinen, to keep those days available. So they are, you know, available for that day. My con those days, my concern is that Mr. Uh, Nicely's rebuttal testimony is directly responsive to Mr. Demucha's testimony. Mm -hmm. And so to the extent that Mr. Demucha is going to be changing his calculations and conclusions, I am concerned that having Mr. Nicely go before Mr. Demucha would have essentially make Mr. Nicely's rebuttal testimony not useful to the AHOs, to, to your office, right. and not give the city a chance to actually respond to the revised uh, Mr. Demucha's testimony. So again, yeah. I know we're, we're talking about how to handle that next week, but that's the, the asterisk I would put on our availability for that those days. That no, that makes sense. I think we have to deal with that problem. And Mr. Demuha, unfortunately, I don't think we can hear from him um, on that day. And it may make sense to, for for Mr. Nicely what we had talked about just in concept, and we will talk about it again next week. I'm not going to make any final decisions here, but in concept, the possibility of Mr. Nicely presenting rebuttal and Sir Rebuttal possibly together. Um, however, we think that's appropriate in response. So it it probably makes sense to save that. I think what we should do though is at least. Um, have Mr. My understanding is Mr. Vanderlinden is is your other rebuttal witness. Is that correct? Yes, Ms. Kinsey, that's correct. I think we should at least plan to meet on November 29th and hear from Mr. Vanderlinden um, and get that. His, I mean, it may be a short, very short day, but that's what I'm tentatively putting out there so that we can get through that and hopefully get through the other witnesses on December 4th. This is absent government shutdown. Um, December 4th, and uh, I don't have it off the top of my head. Is it the 9th? Uh, 4th and 13th are the certain days, and then I believe yes. we have the 6th and the 7th. Seventh, but, yeah. yeah, we're trying to avoid the 4th and the 13th. We have those. Um, with that tentative proposal out there, I will look to you, Mr. Bivens. Do you look like you may have something to add? Well, I, I don't know at this point whether I'm going to cross-examine what is it, Mr. Vanderlinden is being proposed for the 20th? Yes. Um, I haven't made that decision yet. Um, I will probably make it fairly quickly, um, but I'm not prepared to do that at this hearing and and we're like on the fly right now. Right. I am also uh, planning to be at Aqua. Ah. I would, you know, look, if you tell me this is when it's happening and if you're going to do it, do it, then, you know, I'll be prepared. But if we can avoid doing it from the hotel room in Palm Springs, that would be preferable. I, I, I would also add, if, if Mr. Bimis decides he's going to cross that witness, I'd want to be there too, but I could also do it from a hotel room. <laughs> we have to do. So, uh, so if I a modest proposal, which is, you know, I, I, we're going to meet next week on, on Wednesday and I will know by, I can make myself know by Wednesday, whether I'm going to cross Mr. Vanderland in, in any capacity, um, and could make that representation at the, 
at our pre-hearing conference. And okay, so there's one, thank you, Mr. Bivens. Um, one proposal, I wanted to look to you, Ms. Hall. I think you had indicated you were unavailable to join us um, on next week, whenever that is, November 15th, I think it is. That's correct. I'm unavailable all of next week. Would you be comfortable if we, I, what I would like to do is have this conversation as one unit because there's some contingent factors um, in terms of scheduling Mr. Demuha's testimony um, and then also scheduling Mr. Vanderlinden and Mr. Nicely uh, accordingly. Um, do you have any objection to, to us dealing with those in terms of just the timing of that um, hearing from them and whether or not we're going to hold hearing days on November 29th and 30th when we meet next week? My only objection would be to introducing new dates that I don't currently have reserved. Right. I'm fine that, with fair. all of the existing dates. Okay, that, that seems like a fair caveat. So does that make sense to you, Mr. Bivens, that we can return to this question? Well, and then I'll look to the rest of the room. Um, return to the question of the ordering of witnesses when we meet next week, and we may have, by we, I mean, not, not me, you may have more information. That makes sense. And then uh, Ms. O'Sullivan, does that make sense from the city's perspective as well? Yes, I, I think that does, Ms. Kinsey, especially since I, I think some of this, how we deal with it is going to be dependent on how extensive right. the changes are in the red line of Mr. Demuha's testimony. So once we have a handle on that and we meet next week, I think we'll, we should be in a good position to know what to do. That makes sense. And then I'll look, I'm going to go all the way around the room, but do does the parent district ID number one or also all guest ranch have any um, additional comments uh, for, for the parent district. Uh, my my notes are either incomplete or disorderly. Could you remind me what time on the fifteenth we were talking about a pre hearing conference? As I recall, three p.m. Okay, for a conference on the fifteenth. That I will be able to do. Uh, Miss Kinsey, should we expect a, a an order? For, you you should expect some. Monday? Yes, you should expect <laughs> something, but probably not until Monday. Okay, so it's coming. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, my fisheries entities, well, Ms. Hall, it sounds like, are, do you have any other comments on the what we've talked about so far? Just one clarification. Okay. Um, we mentioned the potential of Mr. Vander Linden rebuttal beginning on the 29th. Would you envision um, getting to any of the fisheries rebuttal witnesses on that date? No, we would not hear from the, and it sounds like we're going to try to uh, postpone Mr. Vander Linden too, as well. Okay. But no, my committal, my commitment from before was that we would not get to the, the fisheries uh, entities witnesses on the 29th or 30th, we would pick up on December 4th. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and I will look to either Ms. Beal or um, Ms. Germanario. Do you have any other comments about what we've talked about in our meeting um, in advance of our meeting next week. No, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I called on both of you at this. I should avoid doing that. Ms. Beale, you can go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say my only comment is, as with what happened last time, we, uh, we will make efforts to put um, Rick Bush and myself and hopefully the rest of our team on the accepted list, but it's a little difficult to know in advance. Noted. Yeah. Yes. And Ms. Germanario. Uh, mostly that works for us. Uh, just to clarify the request um, to submit the um, uh, ju request for judicial notice regarding the um, federal ESA status that would be due one week from today, close of business, or at what time? Let's just, I'm converting to this end of the day standard of 11.59 p.m. Just in the electronic age, it seems to make sense. So thank you. Thank you. So we're going to meet next week on the 15th at three o'clock. Is there anything else we should talk about before we close our hearing day today? All right. Uh, well, I wanted to thank all of you again for uh, being here and participating and being and cooperating in us in moving forward. I appreciated uh, three good hearing days and I will see you next week. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kinsey.